now we're going to move on to our next big category. And that category is the best game to buy on sale. Now, let's clarify here. This doesn't mean the game is lacking in any sort of quality or any... Jeff said it the best earlier. It's so hard to choose any sort of standout this year that stands above the rest because there are so many heavy hitters. But I think we all have a couple of games that we ran out and grabbed that we were just like, you know what? Maybe I should have got Resident Evil 4 Remake instead. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start off with you, Chef. What was the? What do you think was the best game to buy on sale 2023? All right, well, let's be honest. This we, we could also name this category best game to just play on Game Pass. <laughs> I think that's that's a really, really similar, and that's kind of realistic True. right now. So mine is best game to play on Game Pass right now, uh, and maybe not pay full price until you play it. But uh, we're going back to the start of the show because it's Starfield for me. I think Starfield... Okay. Uh, I mean, I could honestly do like a two hour rant on Starfield. I could do like a video essay on my pluses and minuses, but um, it does a lot of really cool things that I actually think a lot of other games have not really done. And it takes a lot of risks, but it also has a lot of nothingness. So paying a lot of money for it might feel disappointing, but if you can just pay it for free or a $5 Game Pass subscription, I feel like you eventually find what's good about the game. And then once you find what's good about the game, I think it was actually one of my favorite games of the year, which is, I know, a weird and wild take, but it took a long time to get there for me. I actually yeah, uh, don't somebody. disagree. I agree with you whole, wholeheartedly on that one, bro. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, Just the good games to show up day one on Game Pass. Yeah, you know, I think uh, it's, I definitely believe... I like Starfield a lot. For context, Starfield isn't pretty much any, on any of my nominee lists, so it's, I'm, I'll just talk about it here since we're, I'll segue into it. You know, Starfield for me, it was a cool game, but I thought it was one of the more crunchier RPGs this year. It definitely was an RPG above every, anything else. Um, you need, really needed to commit to what archetype you wanted to be from the jump. You kind of needed to go into it with a little bit of a plan. At least you needed to look at look at that like skill tree before like kind of intently before you make like uh, uh, a definitive choice on what you want to do. But there is a lot to love in that game. I just think if they, I, I debated putting this as a category too. If there was uh, the cut category of aggressively mid game of the year was going to be <laughs> my my pick was going to be Starfield. That's a good way to put it. Because, because it was one of those things where, like, you know, this game does a lot of cool things, but not all of them are great. So, yeah. I yeah, think, okay, what the I kids There's a couple missions in there that are standouts, I would say, but that's about it. Like, a handful. A dime or a dozen. I compared think, to, like, uh, Skyrim. Yeah, there's definitely, like, I mean, it's, it's so hard to compare it to, like, like any of the Elder Scrolls games because they have just so many good stuff. But uh, yeah, I think so there good. was there was a lot of good stuff. My issue was that there was a lot of nothingness. Like, you can run into so many side quests that are literally just, like, fetch quests. And you, you can't tell which ones the good ones are until you've done them all, which is there's just too many. Like, the game is filled with too much stuff. So I feel like the game, it averages out as mid, but it's got really good stuff and really nothing this stuff and the i'm not going to spoil it of course for anybody out there who hasn't played it yet but the the way that the end of the game works and the entire like overarching story is super interesting and super risky and yeah uh, uh, yeah not it's so hard to go into without spoiling yeah i don't want to yeah. i've seen any other game do so i think that's really adds a lot for me yes yeah I, listen I, to I, listen to todd howard's take on what an rpg is agreed you know we, yeah, we did some reporting on that, and yeah, the choices you make and how it affects the world and the role that you play. Yeah. Have you uh, guys seen his uh, his interview where he had with Lex Friedman talking about Starfield? You guys should check that out. I highly uh, recommend it. You got to check out the one where he talks to the guy from Insomniac. That's a lot more um, insightful I'll when it comes out. to Starfield. But okay, okay. Let, let's segue from let's segue from Starfield. Johnny, what was the best game to buy on sale 2023? Lies of P. And the reason why I'm going to say this is because the two games that came out this year that were souls like were that in Lord of the Fallen. And I'm kind of pissed off that I paid full price for Lord of the Fallen. Uh, 
But here's the thing: I would have rather paid the forty dollars I would have paid for Lords of the Fall and paid it for Lords of, or uh, Lies of Pete. But I got oh. like like Homeboy over here. I, I don't mean to steal your homework, but that too is on Game Pass. Yep, yep, yep. Wow. Boy, yeah. Worth that checking game, out, dude. You got it. I would have had, dude. Honestly, that game gets off a of Game Pass, and if they were to sell it for twenty five dollars, it's perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it, perfect. Twenty five dollar game, linear. The story's beautiful. Uh, it's you gotta love the, uh, the the eastern take on a classic, you know, western like folk European. tale. Yeah, yeah, European. European. Those Koreans. Those Koreans. Yeah, really dude. Like Pinocchio spinoff. The P you did a good the, job. The the red P has like a it like means bl- like a like a significance towards blood in Korean too, from what I understand. Really? Yeah. That makes that puts a whole different layer to it. That's crazy because that that story they do a really good job of following the original you know the original eighteen hundred story, but it's it's just the way they did it in like a soul fashion. It was very beautifully yeah. done. The world was awesome to look at. I remember then streaming, I had to stop looking at the world at some point to just keep playing the game. They kept looking around. I'm like, damn, look at the, just, just the, you know, I, I thought it was going to be lame. I didn't have big hopes for the game. I didn't like it at first because it was really, really freaking hard. But once you get that parry mechanic, man, it's fun, man. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Lies of P from Johnny. Uh, best game to buy on sale this year, 2023. Check it out on Game Pass. Both Starfield and Lies of P on Game Pass. Check it out right now. Uh, Drix, what do you what do you say is the best game to buy on sale, 2023? Uh, I'm gonna show my professional wrestling fandom allegiance here and go with AEW Fight Forever, because if you have any knowledge of any wrestlers in that game you're gonna love the crap out of it um it's a good time brings back uh, arcade style sort of wrestling games which we haven't seen you know the wwe has taken a taken a bit of a departure for that i mean as far as their their executions are a bit more complicated and i mean the reason why i'm really saying aew fight forever is because you know for a company that does a weekly show called Collision. You know, they could have done a little better on the collision detection. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, if again, if you're if you're a fan of any one of those wrestlers or their stories, or if you follow along every week, um, you're gonna you're gonna absolutely love AEW Fight Forever. And you know, you might even consider getting the season pass for like all the new characters and stuff but yeah great game to pick up on sale if you can or if they put out a game of the year edition or a collector's edition that comes with just about everything you're gonna want to pick that up at a decent price but you know you you might not want to pay like a whole 60 dollars for it all right well aew fight forever best drix says it's the best game to get on sale for 2023 i you know what drix you're probably right. That is the, probably one of the better games to get on sale. I totally forgot about that game. That's the best game to get drunk while on sale. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right. So for my money, okay, here's maybe controversial. Uh, it doesn't really speak anything to the quality of the game. Um, but I, I got to say um, Mortal Kombat 1. And really only because, guys... This game's expensive. Oh, this it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. This the you got you got the bit game, of a high roller. You got a game. You got this game. It's like seventy bucks, and then you got the season pass for like what five characters? It's like forty bucks. They lords have fallen to you. Like, like <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, Chef seems to think that this fucking game is buggy as hell. Like, I don't know. I played it on console, so like, it is what it is. But yeah, I thought he was going to say the Switch version. <laughs> it's a nightmare on the Switch, dude. Yeah, a lot of funny a lot of funny visuals coming out of the Switch version of that game. <laughs> I Actually, yeah, like try not to get anything too graphically intensive for the Switch. I would not, I would not uh, suggest uh, buying Mortal Kombat 1 on your Switch, but I would, I would suggest buying Mortal Kombat. Buy Mortal Kombat 1. It's really, really cool. It's just uh, for... And there's a lot of characters on the roster already. It's just for every... And then, you know, they, they have these seasonal fatalities and they're like five bucks a pop. Like, you know, 
there's a lot mm -hmm. of there's there, a, sorry they're more than that i just got to point that out they're uh that's a big uh, topic right now is that they're they're monetizing everything really heavily so like for a while they actually i think they did actually change it maybe the fire doesn't pop now but they were doing like almost 20 dollars for the fatalities and oh, skins geez, are over 10 dollars in a game that's already cost Ooh, 80 dollars 80 bucks so, yeah plus you know that offended uh, me man yeah. yeah, nickel and diming you. No, not nickel and dime. It's like ones and fiving you. You know, like like yeah. you know, to, to paper money at that point. They've uh, they've 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 forgotten what change looks like. I think. Damn. See. So again. So, like Mortal Kombat One, sick game, fucking awesome game. You gotta love the game. I'm, it's yep. a, it's a sweet game, but if you want anything. <laughs> In this game, you're gonna have to shell out some cash. So, it, that's the reason why I say if you could get the base game on sale, get it on sale. Absolutely. Is played in that game? As an yeah. assist. As an, As assist, an assist only, not a playable character. Ah, uh, man. I don't know, man. <laughs> okay. I, that was one of the one things I didn't like about the game I first saw. I was like, is she in the game? I saw that she was an assist, but I'm like, is she in the game? And then I see she's not, and I'm like, how are you going to have a Mortal Kombat game without Sony Blade? Yeah, and call it Mortal Kombat 1 and without <laughs> you know, some of the characters from the first game. It's like, is it even really the prequel you think it is? <laughs> Who's Johnny swooning for the whole tournament? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Johnny Cage. Everybody, every female character is the answer. But, uh, that's can you can you guess who I played as as a kid? Not <laughs> gee, gee, Johnny, I might have a thought or two. Uh, <laughs> Cage is my man, dude. <laughs>